Hey everyone, it's me Cynthia. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm so excited to share my kitchen DIY makeover with you. This was a $300 transformation where I did a contact paper backsplash and countertop and painted my cabinets black. When I first moved into this apartment, it was so mismatched. The kitchen was this warm, orange brown cabinet with mint tiles and then two different countertops where I had a laminate countertop and then my island was a black granite. Everything was just so mismatched. And I've always loved all those photos on Pinterest of like modern black kitchen. So I thought, all right, this was what, at the beginning of lockdown and quarantine, I had so much time on my hands. So I was like, I can do this. So then I decided to tackle my kitchen. So if you wanna see how I did this, keep on watching. I'm gonna have timestamps below of all of the sections. And like I said, I did this back in March. So some of the footage is a little old. It's gonna be a bit of a throwback, but I hope you enjoy Let's get into it. So the first thing I did was apply the contact paper. This contact paper is by a brand called DC Fix. I ordered the slate gray pattern because it looks like soapstone. It is my dream one day to get real soapstone, but it's just so expensive. All you need for the contact paper DIY is contact paper. I ordered the option with the applicator, which came with the actual applicator um, and a small knife to cut it up. I ended up ordering about seven to eight rolls. I basically did slight measurements beforehand to see how many rolls I would need. The only prep you need to do beforehand is to wipe down your countertops or wherever you apply the contact paper so that there's no grease or oil so that it sticks and adheres well. The first time I applied it was a total fail. You see that with my mint tiles, they're actually really small squares. So it looked crazy whack and indented. Highly recommend against it. I think if you have larger tiles on your backsplash or if you had subway tile, it might work. Tile is still back there behind drywall. We basically just bought drywall, cut it up to match the shape and stuck it on with some caulking. Um, my dad said that the caulking wouldn't ruin the tile, but it would act as glue. So if I ever wanted to remove this, the mint tile would still be there. That makes it a bit tricky if you don't have a flat backsplash to work with, but I'm gonna assume that most of you are just doing your countertops. But yeah, get ready to maybe need some drywall. I would just do a test first, you never know. Um, I think it also just depends on the type of kitchen you have, right? So now with the drywall and a flat backsplash to work with, I just went in and started applying the contact paper. The only tip here and the key is to decide whether you want to lay out your contact paper horizontally or vertically. Because I was doing both my backsplash and my countertops, I decided to run them vertically so that it looked seamless when you looked at it with your eye. But I honestly think now though that you should always run it horizontally because you want the seams of where the contact paper sticks together or sticks next to each other to be running parallel to where your edges of your countertop are. But I did it vertically so there are spots where you can see the seams between each of the contact paper um, pieces that I stuck on. I think when you're doing contact paper it's inevitable because you're not getting really thick or wide pieces of contact paper. I think if you're just doing your countertops, they have a wider option and I would totally go for that one because then you can just match it to the edges of your countertop and do it edge to edge so that you don't have seams running along your actual surfaces, if that makes sense. So from there, I just stuck on the first piece vertically. It looked great. I recommend matching up the patterns with this slate gray design. You see that there are lighter patches and darker patches, so it's really apparent when you don't match up like the shades or the tones, like the line will be more visible. So that's why it took a bit more work and patience for me because I wanted to make sure that they match as much as possible. I think if you're getting the wood or the marble pattern, it won't be this much work. I think with this one, it's just because there's like the lighter and the darker patches that make it more important to match up the pattern. Every time I wanted to apply another section of contact paper, I basically looked at my options and held them up to see where the pattern matched the most. And then I applied it and I did that across the entire thing. That's basically it for the contact paper. It was just a lot of going over the contact paper with the applicator and doing that movement and a lot of matching and basically assembling a puzzle. <laughs> I think that if you had a weekend or even a day, depending on how big or small the area you want to cover is, it's so simple to do where in the bathroom, it took me about three hours for my bathroom countertop. 
And then once I had the contact paper applied, I moved on to tackling my cabinets, which, oh my God, took me so long. I didn't know how many cabinet doors I actually had to paint. What you need to paint your cabinets are paint, obviously. I did the Black Beauty by Benjamin Moore. I loved this black color. It's a bit more of a warm tone and I think it's so beautiful and such a great option. And I also got the primer that the paint shop recommended. They said that this one was great because you're covering a cabinet door. And the most important thing that made a big difference here was the small roller brush that they recommended. You want a very thin and small roller because that helps you get the most even, smooth finish. Don't try to skimp out on the roller. This is what helped me get the smooth finish. Highly recommend it. It wasn't even that expensive. I'm so glad the paint shop came in clutch because otherwise I think I'd have very clumpy cabinets right now. And then of course you need the other basic painting tools like a paintbrush, painter's tape, sandpaper because you're gonna have to be sanding everything down and then just an all-purpose cleaner and a towel or something with everything that you're doing you just want to make sure it's a clean surface when you first start off and because we're in the kitchen there's a lot of grease and oil and everything so you just want to make sure everything is wiped down when you're prepping and then the last thing that you need and this is optional i actually recommend against this is a wood filler or some spackle if you want to fill the holes of your cabinet doors. That's something that I wanted to do because I love the look of a modular kitchen with no handles. You'll see there's no handles on anything right now. Um, I don't recommend this because this made this process so hard for me, but I use spackle. So if you wanna try, that's what I did. With the doors, the first thing you wanna do is remove all the doors. I highly recommend this part because it just helps you get the most even paint finish. It helps the paint level. I removed the doors but kept the hinges on. That's where I chose to be lazy. And I think that's fine. You just have to paint around your hinges when you're doing the actual like cabinet parts. So once I removed all the doors, I just cleaned everything off. Uh, with an all-purpose cleaner so that there was no oil or grease on them and I decided to paint both sides of my cabinet doors because I wanted it to look professional. If you're choosing to do this, I recommend painting the back sides first because it's inevitable that you'll get a bit of like denting or paint off when you flip them over. When you're painting the doors, I rested mine on cardboard boxes that just came from packages that I ordered. A lot of other people use red Solo cups. And then for the actual prepping and painting, you basically want to sand down the doors first, remove that gloss finish if you have one. So I went in with I think 120 grit sandpaper and I did this manually. If you are more like tool savvy and you have a uh, handheld like sander thing, I know that my friends use that when they did their kitchen makeover. I just... I'm just a girl in her apartment trying to have a nice kitchen, so I just hand sanded everything lightly. <laughs> I sanded, I cleaned the dust off. You don't want to have dust on there when you start priming. And then I primed. I ended up doing about two layers of light primer. I was just obsessed with having an opaque layer on top, so I just did two layers. And then I let that dry for a full 24 hours before I applied the paint. With the paint, I ended up doing three layers of a pretty light coat. Um, because I wanted to get the most smooth finish possible and I wanted a pretty opaque black. With this one, because it's a high quality paint, I think you can get away with two layers, but I'm me and I'm very type A, so I did three layers. <laughs> and then once that's done, I left about one to two days before I flipped the doors over to do the front side and then I repeated the same process. I honestly think it would be better if you waited three to four days, just because even with two days, in between, I still ended up having a few like dents or scratches from having them rest on like the boxes or the solo cups. If you're filling the holes, you do that before you do any of this. So if you're filling the holes where your handles used to be, I I did that after the cleaning stage and then I sanded that down as I sanded everything else down to get the most flat surface that I could. And then I did the two coats of primer, three coats of paint. And then alongside painting the doors, I also painted the cabinets themselves. With this, you basically just want to tape off all of your edges so that you don't get paint on the insides of your cupboards. And with this, I mostly used a paintbrush, um, but for all the flat edges, I just used the same small roller that I used for the doors. And yeah, it was pretty much the same. You wanna just sand everything down, make sure you get into all the creases with your paintbrush, but it was really straightforward and the exact 
exact same process as the doors. And then once everything was dry, which this was all probably over a month because I was only doing them on weekends, <laughs> I put everything back. So I hung all the doors back up. Everything looked amazing. There was one time where when I was putting one door up, I I scratched it. So then there was a dent on it. So then I took it back down, re-sanded it, repainted it, and now it's back up and it looks very smooth. But don't be afraid to just take it down and refinish it if you're not happy with it. It's just a little bit of paint and a lot of sanding. And voila. I had black cabinets, which was crazy. I think the tips for this part is one, like I mentioned a few times, don't fill the holes. You'll end up just having these bumps. Even if you try, you have the hardest that you can to have a flat surface, I think it's not worth it. Um, I think it's mostly in certain angles, if you're moving the angle that you're looking at the cabinets a lot, so that's where I see the bumps. I think I'll eventually just order some black, flat, minimal handles and uh, screw them back on and that'll cover those bumps that I see but I really like the look of no handles and it's been fine so far so if they bother me one day I'll do that and it's fine um, but just save yourself the hassle of that entire process and don't try to do what I did and that's pretty much it that is my entire kitchen DIY makeover when I look back at the before photos this was such a worthwhile process. I can't believe that if I didn't do this, I would still be living in that kitchen. It wasn't bad, it was just very mismatched. And as like a person in design and like creative, it would have bothered me so much. And that's why I try to do this, where even with these small imperfections that I shared in this video, which I think just come with doing a DIY makeover, I honestly love it. I love that I have this beautiful kitchen that inspires me to cook more and that just goes more with my aesthetic, especially at a $300 price tag, which is also in Canadian. So if you're American, I'm sure all the tools would have only costed you like $250. And that's basically it for this video. You saw my entire process of what I did. I'm going to also link the videos that I watched on how to paint cabinets and how to apply contact paper that I found the most helpful, just because I'm not sure if I have all the footage from when I did this in March. <laughs> um, so I'll leave those linked in the description box too if you want more detailed shots of what people did. It's honestly so much trial and error though. I think that this is such a great option because kitchen renos are so expensive and this gave me the look that I wanted. And eventually if we ever wanted to redo this kitchen, we could. But this is good for me for now, you know? I'm just here living my best life. I know that if you're renting a place, your landlord might not like the idea of you painting the cabinets. So I honestly think just doing contact paper to give your countertops a refresh makes such a big difference. Where even when I hadn't painted the cabinets yet, just having a matching countertop vibe with those orangey brown cabinets still looked pretty good. I was just very type A with what I wanted. The other thing I've seen people do is use contact paper on their actual cabinets too. And it looks pretty good where they have a light wood option, they have like a walnut wood option. I've also seen pictures of people using the slate gray like stone contact paper on their cabinets and it also looks pretty good. Um, where it's the same process. So highly recommend that if you're not able to paint your cabinets, but I really love how this turned out. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you want to see more DIYs, I'm also doing my bathroom DIY, just like a very, very simple one. So if you want to see that, let me know because I haven't really been filming it, but I can if you want. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm so glad I finally came around to filming it. I know that it's been a few months since I've done this, but I hope that you enjoyed. I honestly really love how it looks now. The only thing that I want is a few more like wood accent pieces. Like I love the look of big wood bowls or like like organic looking dishware. I also love, I've been obsessed with the Pick Up Limes channel and Avant Garde Vegans channel because I've been cooking more plant-based stuff and how they just have plants everywhere. That's like my goal aesthetic. So I'm actually picking up a few pothos off of Facebook marketplace this weekend and I'm going to add them to the tops of my kitchen cabinet. So I'll have like pothos kind of draping down. I think it's going to look so good. I'll probably post photos on Instagram if it turns out into the vision I'm thinking it will. So follow me on there if you haven't yet. It's at inspiro. But other than that, I will see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye everyone.